All right, guys, excuse my lateness on talking about this stuff, but it's time to talk about the pay-per-view, which was Friday and Saturday, our first pay-per-view as our own company, and we had some challenges. Not that they should overshadow our successes, because overall, the event went great, and 98% of people were able to watch the pay-per-view. There were a couple people who had issues, and listen, I already announced right after the event, I got no problem refunding anyone who wants a refund, okay? Information on the website for that, but if you want a refund, we'll give it to you, because I want to keep everyone happy so we can keep doing these pay-per-views. A whole slew of circumstances came together, and this is what happened. When we got the pay-per-view up and going, we tested it Wednesday, tested it Thursday, race day Friday, we're all ready to go. About two hours before the event starts, and traffic starts to build on the website. I get a call from Johnny, our director, and he's like, hey man, Vimeo is down. Vimeo is a $10 billion company. Basically, the way it works is once people get on our website, they get logged in, they pay, they start watching. All of the traffic load is on Vimeo at that point, right? So Vimeo goes down, and we had no other real options at that point. We called around, got onto another uh, video streaming service, got it back up, right? Boom, our internet at the Freedom Factory flickers. Like, never has this happened before. We had fiber optic ran into the Freedom Factory, which is well worth it because we have insane internet speeds. But out of nowhere, our internet flickers. So now, right after we get back up and going, all of your guys' screens at home go black. And everyone at home, you know, obviously, starts hitting the refresh button. Now we have a refresh swarm. It was 895,000 refreshes in under five minutes. So that then took down the server, which holds the whole website up. So now you can't even access the website. So it went from not being able to see the video player to then being able to see the video player again to now the website's just completely down. So now the refresh swarm starting to calm down. Server comes back online. Everybody comes back in, right? So now we have this like huge cycle of people coming back on the website, leaving it, coming back. I don't know how many customers we lost in this time, you know, whatever. But eventually everything smoothened out and we ended up back on Vimeo and this was during qualifying. So basically like 20 minutes before we actually got to race, we got this all ironed out. And we were right at the point where we were gonna stream the Freedom 500 for free to YouTube and refund everybody, which would have been devastating to obviously the entire financial effort of this whole you know race. But we were gonna do it because I didn't wanna let you guys down. And uh, that option was on the table up until all of a sudden we started getting the website to smooth it out. And I'm not gonna say there wasn't other issues. Like we had a couple points during the race where you know we saw quite a few people refreshing, but it seemed like it went pretty smooth for a lot of you guys, and I hope it did. Doing this on our own was a humongous risk, and it almost all failed. Literally almost all came crumbling down minutes before the race. It was so close to uh, getting fully streamed for free. It's a really intense thing. Like, I'm telling you, between this Freedom 500 and the very first one, I mean, those two events are in the top five most stressful things I've ever had happen in my career. So... Glad we got through that. It felt really good when the race was over and like I'm texting the director in my car like, is the stream up, is the stream up? And magically it stayed up throughout the whole race. So just amazing. And then we moved to the next thing, which really wasn't the problem is we had some attacks on the website, a DDoS attack where people are basically loading up our server uh, using bots. We have a defense mechanism in place for that. So that didn't affect us so much, but Really just the flicker in the internet was bad. But it's crazy that people do still attack the website. Like, like, why are you attacking our website? You know what I mean? I guess people just have to always target good things. Not gonna worry about that. It was only like 50,000 uh, refreshes is what it's equal to. So pales in comparison to the internet flickering and causing all of you guys to actually refresh. All good. On to my next issue, the lap counter. We were supposed to have a thing on screen the whole race says lap 
22 out of 100, lab 40 out of 100. The people that do our lab counting, we have like a company come in that manages positions and labs and all that. There was an ampersand in the coding that you know, puts out the data to our live stream. And that ampersand corrupted all the data. So we had no real lab count. You'll see it comes on later, you know, about 70 laps in because we were doing it manually, but the guys are scrambling in the background trying to figure this out. And then the position data also was corrupted because of that. So that's why there was no leaderboard, no lap counter. That stuff was all supposed to be there. We paid for it to be there. You know, we did everything we could to have it there, but it just didn't work out. So next time we'll be dialed. A uh, couple things I want to touch on. The audio, one million times better. Audio, on point. Sounded way better. The cameras were way too dark, okay? We did not have our cameras set up correctly. We're gonna work on that. Some things I know that I need to do is get a mobile Jumbotron for the people at the Freedom Factory so they can actually see the stream because they don't have any way to see instant replays. They don't know what the announcers are talking about. So we gotta get that figured out. Maybe even some TVs and hang them from the fence. We gotta get an audio system for the south side of the track now that we have the VIP. Uh, and then the weather, guys, the weather was crazy this weekend. I don't know if you guys really caught into that. I was trying not to show it on the channel. We had some crazy weather. On Thursday, 30 knot winds. Friday, supposed to rain all day. Rains in the morning, rains till about 11. Boom, dries up. Somehow it didn't rain later in the day too because right when we were starting the race, Tanner Fouts comes up to me, he's like, dude, I it looks like it's gonna rain. And I'm like, I don't think it's gonna rain. These humongous clouds come right over the track and just hold. Didn't drop a single drop of rain. Miracle. Then moved to Saturday. It was for sure gonna rain right at like 5.30. So we moved the whole event up. So I know some of you guys missed the burnout contest because you didn't know that, but we announced it everywhere on our social media. It was one of those deals where like, if we stuck with the time that we had already set, we wouldn't have got the event done. So I said, screw it. We're gonna move the whole thing up two hours, two and a half hours, show up early, get on the stream early, and we are going to get this event done, you know? Uh, a lot of guys would just say, oh, we gotta cancel the event. I just wanted to do it. I didn't wanna miss out on doing burnouts. It was amazing. So we got the event done. The last car went, and then it started raining. It was literally perfect timing. So got really lucky on Saturday. But it cut the event short, so sorry to those of you who didn't feel like you got your full experience because we just rushed through it. You know, we were freaking boom, 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 trying to get those burnouts through so everyone got a shot. Some people towed their car like a thousand miles. I wanted to make sure they got to blow off some tires. You know, overall, we had some issues. The internet stuff, definitely the most important of them because if you guys can't watch and you're spending money to watch, that's just not right. You know, in person, there's no internet to blind these people, you know, so they, they're going to get a show regardless. But at home, there's a bigger audience, you know? The Freedom Factory can only hold so many people. There's a way bigger audience watching from home. That's you guys. And I thank you guys so much for dealing with our technical difficulties. We really are gonna get it worked out. We think we have a lot of uh, good strategies that we're gonna implement for uh, Indy, which is May 15th, May 14th and 15th. It's a, it's just a lot, man. Like So overall, guys, I'm not gonna let you know the difficulties shadow such amazing things that we accomplished. I hope you guys liked it. And we're open to any recommendations in the comments below. Drop your comments. We will try and improve. We will improve. So come back for the next one, May 14th and 15th, the Indy 800. We're looking forward to it, but that's it for now. We'll freaking see you later.